I'm Sandra London, and this is Carrie Wendell Thornley. Carrie, you're here to make a confession. Yeah, yeah, a confession I've been trying to make since 1975, as a matter of fact. What did, what did he do? Well, the first thing I did was go to the Atlanta police uh, when uh, Reginald Eves was investigating the Martin Luther King assassination was uh, because of something I read in the paper about uh, uh, some terminology, one of the assassins, the accused assassins in the King assassination, the people Robert Byron Watson was accusing. Mm -hmm. One of those men said he was going to kill King the same way he'd killed Kennedy and was going to frame some jailbird for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the word jailbird rang a bell with me because I had talked to some weird Nazi down in New Orleans uh, between the Bay of Pigs uh, invasion and the Kennedy assassination during that three-year period, who had talked about framing some jailbird for the Kennedy assassination. Are you telling me that you were involved in the conspiracy to kill Kennedy? Not only that, I said, why do you want to frame some jailbird? And he said, well, who would you suggest framing, Kerry? And I said, why don't you frame some communist? Not thinking that my Marxist buddy in the Marine Corps, Lee Harvey Oswald, was some communist. The guy just smirked. He looked down at the floor. He couldn't look me in the eye when I said that. He knew I was going to say that. Yeah. And uh, they who were, of course, they were already you were planning. Talking to, Gary? Uh, I don't know who he was. The name he used was Gary Kirsten. Uh, I have since become very much convinced that Gary Kirsten was somebody else. Uh, I, uh, he left two or three trails of evidence as to who he might be if he weren't Gary Kirsten. Uh, one trail leads to a nuclear physicist that used to teach at Georgia State, uh, who originally was a scientist for Hitler named Tom Mitt. Another trail of evidence leads to a, a guy working in Canada for the uh, Permandex Corporation named Mortimer Bloomfield, uh, who has been accused many times of involvement in the assassination. Uh, another trail of evidence leads to Edward Howard Hunt. That's who I think it was. It still could have been somebody impersonating and looking as much as possible like Edward Howard Hunt. It still could have been somebody else. The intelligence community is deep and convoluted. It's very hard to figure out who's on which side unless you have a program, and I unfortunately do not have a program. I understand you wrote a book yeah. about Lee Harvey Oswald yeah. before the assassination. Yes, yes. How did that well, I was going to write a book about uh, Marines in the Far East when I got overseas, and which I did. I'd known Oswald in the States just were before you that. In the Marines? Yeah, I was in the Marines with Lee Harvey Oswald. We were when? stationed at El Toro Marine Base, actually a subsidiary of El Toro, uh, in 1959, spring of 1959. I think I probably met him sometime in either uh, late April or early May, maybe earlier than that. But it was, I remember taking an East a few days leave for Easter, and I remember it was somewhere around that, that period of time. I don't know when Easter was in 1959. And what uh, kind of relationship did you have with Lee Harvey Oswald? Uh, we were introduced to one another because we were both atheists. Somebody said, hey, Carrie, you want to meet another atheist? And I said, all right. And they took me over to this hut, and there's this guy sitting on a bucket, and he's looking up at me with this little smile that Oswald almost always had, even, even when he was being accused of the Kennedy assassination, this little mysterious, tight little grin, you know, and he looks up at me and I say, uh, I hear you're an atheist. And he says, yeah. He says, I think the best religion is communism. Mm -hmm. Well, I was a democratic socialist at the time myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, disagreed with communism in Corliss Lamont's words because of their ambiguous stand on democracy. Otherwise, I was completely in agreement with them economically and, and uh, ethically and so on and so forth. You had no problem or conflict with being a Marine, United States Marine, and a Well, Army. I had joined the Marines in order to avoid being drafted into the Army at a time when I was still a cons political conservative anyway, a few years earlier. Mm -hmm. I had gotten, become a, I, I got a crush on a girl in high school who was, who was very left-wing, and as a result, uh, I became very left-wing, and by the time I had to go on active duty, I was a raving firebrand. <laughs> well, so much for the deep roots of your philosophical beliefs. <laughs> yeah, well, and then I converted to Ayn Rand as I got out of the Marines, Another which woman. flipped me back over into the, uh, into the, into the far right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people get very confused about that, about what phase I was, I was which. But when I knew Oswald, when I knew Oswald, though, we were very close together. And it seemed to me at the time, mm -hmm. in our thinking, mm -hmm. he was a little more authoritarian than I was. But that was it. 
And then he gave me a copy of 1984 to read. Okay. And people say, why would a socialist mm -hmm. give somebody a copy of 1984, which is essentially a, a critique of socialism? Maybe just even to though, engage you in a dialogue, see what you thought. Yeah, well, that was exactly it. I have since uh, found out that that is one of the ways a that a certain faction in the intelligence community uh, among the soliterists who are an old anti-communist group, there's a certain faction of them, the way they find out what somebody believes is in the, the way they distinguish between friends and enemies is in terms of what somebody thinks of 19. They're into George Orwell, or they think they are. Mm -hmm. I don't think they understand him. I, it's like I, a think, test. I think they're a bunch of right wingers. Are you yeah. saying it's like a test? Yeah, it's like a test. It's a, how you react to Orwell determines whether you're a dangerous communist mm -hmm. or not. Lee, I think, was a CIA, CIB agent who came out of the soliterist, very right wing in actual fact, who was finding out who was a communist in the outfit by going around saying he was a communist. That's a possibility. That's a good possibility. That's one that people like Mark Lane might agree with.